Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are continuing with the navigation component library. And what we are going to apply today is the bottom navigation bar. As you can see on the screen, bottom navigation bar consists of icons and titles. That each of those group of icons and titles represent a single screen. And it lets you easily navigate between those screens once you click on them. Now, before applying the bottom navigation bar, I want to show you two things that I forgot to mention in the previous video. For now, here's our app from the previous video. You can go to the second fragment, then the third fragment, and you can see here the back button of the action bar is visible in any fragment. But what if you want to hide this back button on some certain fragments? How you can do this? So to do that, we will head to the main activity. And here, what we are going to do is we are going to specify that we don't want these fragments to show the back button. So here within the setup action bar with nav controller function, if you press control P, you can see that it takes something called configuration of type app bar configuration. So here we are going to create an object of the app bar configuration. I'm going to name it config equal to app bar configuration. And here it has a couple of overloads. We're going to use the one that takes a set of IDs or set of integers. So here, then the function arguments pass a set. So set off. And here you can specify the fragments which you don't want to show the back button on the action bar. So the way to specify that is by passing the ID of the fragment from the nav graph. So here are dot ID dot third fragment. So for example, we don't want to show the back button on the third fragment. And now before running, we have to pass the config to the function. So here add a comma and pass the config. Finally, let's run, see how would this function. And here you can see that it shows within the first fragment. So by default, if you didn't specify any configuration, the back button of the action bar will not show within the first fragment or the default fragment. But in this case it shows because we didn't specify that. So let's go to the third fragment. And you can see that the third fragment here doesn't show the back button. You can also specify the first fragment, first fragment, and we are going to run again. And now you can see it doesn't show within the first fragment. It only shows within the second. Go to the third, it doesn't show within the third fragment. Now, in the previous video, we passed some known types like string, integers, or any other primitive type. But what if you want to pass a whole object? How would you do that? So now let's go to the nav graph and see what we have passed in the previous video. Here within the nav graph, you can see that the third fragment takes three arguments, name, age, occupation, and all of them are strings. So what if you want to pass a whole object? So before doing anything, I will go to the second fragment, which is the fragment that is responsible of sending the data to the third fragment. Here, then the on view create of the third fragment, we are passing three things. So we want to combine all of these things within a single object. And that will be useful because if you have a lot of things that you want to pass to another fragment, then you can just simply pass one object that contains all these fields. So for this, I'm going to create here a data class and I'm going to call it user. And this data class will have three things or three fields. So the first thing is name. So val name of type string then val age is of type int, and finally val occupation is of type string as well. And now if you go back to the nav graph and we are going to get rid of these, and what we are going to add is user for the name and the type is going to be custom parsable. So select custom parsable, and under studio helps you to find that particular class that you want to pass. But in this case, our class is just a plain data class or plain Kotlin class that is not of type parsable. So how we can make it parsable? To make the data class parsable, you have to do two things. The first thing is that you have to annotate this class with, par with parcelize. And by default, parcelize is not resolved. So you have to add the plugin for the parcelize annotation. The second thing is to make your class implement the parcelable interface. And now we can go to the build.gradle file, the module one, and here we are going to add our plugin for the annotation. So 
So here underneath the safe args, add this plugin and make sure this plugin here is underneath the com Android application. Now let's sync and go back to our second fragment. And here, once it's done syncing, we are going to import the parcelize annotation. Make sure to import Kotlin X parcelize. And now if you go back to the nav graph, we can simply see the user class appears once we select parcelable type. Again, here, click on the third fragment, add arguments, select the custom parcelable, and here you can see the user class shows. Select the parsable type and give it a name. For example, I'm going to give it user. And here, click add. And let's go back to the second fragment. Here you can see that the second fragment now takes a user instead of strings. So let's create that very quickly. Val user is of type user, name, age, and occupation. Now for the age, the age we get as a string. So let's convert it to an int since the class gets the age as an integer. And now we can simply just pass this user to the function arguments. Now before running, we are going to go to the third fragment. Since we are getting the args within the third fragment, here we're getting a name, age, and occupation. You can see that the argument now takes a user. Instead of getting the name, age, occupation separately, we are going to get this from the user object. Here, user, pass user here, and here as well. Now to verify, let's run this very quickly. And here, go to a second fragment, add a name, age, occupation. Go to the third fragment with args, and you can see now it works perfectly. And now let's implement the bottom navigation bar. Before everything, one thing to keep in mind that I have replaced all the fragments layouts. So currently the fragment layouts only represent a single text view that says the name of the fragment. So the first fragment says first fragment, second fragment says second fragment, and lastly the third fragment also says third fragment. And I've also deleted the code within the third fragment. So now we don't have any code, only the on view created and the on create view and the binding set. And this is similar to the rest of the fragment. Uh, similarly, we don't have any destinations within the navigation bar. So to set everything from the beginning. So the first thing that I would like to do to implement the bottom navigation bar is to edit the main activity layout. So if you think about it, the bottom navigation bar should always be visible if you are navigating between your destinations, like the main destinations, for example, home, profile, and detail screen. So where should the bottom navigation bar or the bottom navigation view should actually exist? If you think about it enough, it should exist within the main activity since the main activity hosts all the fragments. So for that, we are going to add the bottom navigation view here underneath the fragment container view. So for this, I'm going to add the bottom navigation view. So bottom, and if you didn't get this bottom navigation view, make sure that you have included the dependency from the library, which is Android X navigation navigation UI KTX. Now let's go back here. And for the bottom navigation bar or the bottom navigation view, it should fill the max width of the parent. And for the height, we are going to give it the default height for the bottom navigation view. So wrap content. And lastly, we have to attach it to the bottom of the parent. So take it, attach it to the bottom. And here we have to attach the bottom of the frame container view to the top of the bottom navigation view. So Let's make the height at zero dp and take that and attach it to the top of the bottom navigation view and the top of the fragment container to the top of the parent. And that's it. Now let's set our nav graph. So go back to the nav graph. Here we are going to add the destinations. So fragment first, fragment second, and lastly fragment third. Now to implement the bottom navigation view, we don't have to attach any fragment to any fragment to specify the destination. The bottom navigation bar or the bottom navigation view will take care of that for you whenever you click on the icon or the title that represent that screen. Now with the bottom navigation view, we have to first create a menu and that menu contains some items and each item contains an icon and a title that represent the fragment. So here within rest, right click, new Android resource file. And for the resource type is going to be a menu and for the name, I'm going to give it bottom nav menu. And you can see here, it's just similar to our layout. 
it contains a mini opening tag and a closing tag and between those tags you are going to add your items with the item tag now each item should have an id and since that item represent a screen or a fragment then make sure that the id matches the same id within your nav graph so for example say this item here represent the first screen then it should have the same id of the first screen and this is very important to make the bottom navigation bar function properly so here given an icon for example i'm going to give it android and for the title i'm going to give it home now feel free to add any icon or any title now here again another item is going to have an id and this item represents the second screen or the second fragment so give it the same id let's go back to the nav graph just to make sure second fragment has this id copy it and paste it here again it has an icon and this icon for example say face for the title it's a profile for example and lastly let's add another item that represents the third fragment id id let's go back to the nav graph third fragment has this id paste the id give it some icon and let's give it ic check and just an example so it doesn't matter what are the titles and the icons for now so for the title is going to be details details and the last thing is to attach this menu to the bottom navigation view so let's go to the main activity layout and here add the menu attribute and now you can access the bottom navigation menu and once you did that you can see that the menu now shows within our bottom navigation view first screen is the default screen which is the first fragment and you can see it has a different color than the rest that indicates that this fragment or this screen is currently visible to the user now the last tip is to set up the nav controller with the bottom navigation view so we can do that within the main activity here let's just check the id of the bottom navigation view you can see it has this id bottom navigation view so binding dot bottom navigation view dot set up with nav controller and here you can simply pass the nav controller now let's run to see how this works so here you can see the first fragment shows by default because we have set that as the home fragment or the default fragment to be shown whenever we open the app which has this icon now if you click on the profile it takes you to the second fragment and you can see that the profile now is highlighted to tell the user that this is currently visible go to the detail screen goes to the detail screen now if you go back and just move to the default fragment or the default screen and click back again it takes you back to the home screen so that was it for this video thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next video